the rebuild of our reputation is officially underway and entering its second week. The plans have been laid out, the foundation is taking shape, and in week two, construction of our new identity will begin in earnest. It's March 21st, 2024, and welcome to week two of the North American League season for 2024. I'm Caliber Jacob Anderson, he's Davide Fox Bucci, and joining us in studio here in Philly, none other than the Golden Voice T2 man himself, Jonah Jays Wills Willinger. It's good to see you, buddy. Great to be here, man. Thank you for the warm welcome. I appreciate it. Obviously, someone's got to keep Laxing's seat warm for him while he's gone. True. I thought we were going to get Jinxie. Uh, that, What's that's going honestly on? on me. I, I'm What's sorry I'm not on? Jinxie. Oh, sorry. The guy's saving the game. He, he oh. should be here. You're he totally right. should be. Right. I mean, hey, we got more space on the couch, and it's even the color of his org. We could totally just put him right there. Just give him a call. Do you, Jin do you have a number? Just, just hit my line. He does follow the me on Twitter. Is orange. He actually he Dude, followed me on Twitter be before, before he blew up. So I actually, I might have a line to him if You're I try. You're in. You're already I, in. I might nice be little in. flex. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Have you two actually had the chance to meet at any point before this? Or, or did you meet for the first time today? No, this was the first time. I mean, I heard him do like a cast before and I tweeted at him and I was like, yo, your casting is very good. And uh, oh. I think that, that was the extent of it. That was the extent of it. And then so yeah, today, that was the we only met interaction the first you time. Had. Yeah. yeah, that was the only interaction we've ever had. I gave him some props. That was it. I don't even think he liked the tweet either. So, I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I like, like the like, tweet. You know. the yeah, hell? I think it was, yeah, a couple years ago when I first subbed for the NAL, popped in there. This guy was like, nice work. And I was like, Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. So, good to be here. There you go. Well, good stuff. Now we all have to work together. We're all in the foxhole together at the same time. And speaking of foxhole, Fox, are you ready and excited for week two? How are you feeling, dude? I'm pretty excited. I think we got a good set of games. Obviously, we didn't get to see Beast Coast play last week. I'm excited to see how they shape up. And then we got the double header today. It's, I mean, so many great games. Yeah, so we should explain a little bit about what's going on. You may notice that there's a couple logos on this screen that are that were here but are no longer. One of them is Los because we've had a scheduling reshuffle and and Los is actually not playing a game today. They will play two games tomorrow. But the other thing is that on Tuesday, it was announced a team is no longer participating in the NAL, which means we had to not only account for those games not being played, but we also needed to make sure that the games from Play Day 1 that we were supposed to play but couldn't happen because of server problems Everything is now all being mixed up. So on your screen, those first four games are all the ones that were originally supposed to happen on day three. So those are happening as planned. Those haven't changed. But Beast Coast and Oxygen will be playing one more game at the very end of the day because that is the matchup they were supposed to do on play day one. So everybody else only has the one to worry about. But Beast Coast and Oxygen will be playing two best of ones today. And teams don't really understand how difficult it is to start off the day with a game and then come back after you wind down and play another game at the end of the day. It's a very big thing as a pro player. So to see both these teams that I'm excited to see OHG and Beast Coast ra see how they perform throughout the day. And that, that last game is going to be obviously, in my opinion, the game of the day. Yeah. And I'm really glad we get to see Beast Coast twice, frankly. We didn't get to see them the other day. The only team that we True. haven't seen them play. And this roster that I'm sure we're going to talk a good bit about we get to see him twice. We can actually start to make up our mind about this team a little bit. I'm going to say Luminosity actually had the ability to kick off their season last week, but Beast Coast were not nearly as fortunate. So we'll just jump right into game one. No additional preamble. Let's just give this thing its due diligence because Beast Coast is brand new. None of these guys have played with one another before. Fett is trying to find a way to coax all these four players together into an actual roster, but it looks a lot different from teams of the past because usually Beast Coast, you mentioned it before, the Band of Misfits analogy, I, mm -hmm. I believe is what you said, but they've never had a roster quite like this one. And then Luminosity comes into the picture at the same time. They had a game against Space Station last week. So this game is kind of all over the place. It is all over the place. Both teams, in my opinion, sit in a similar seat where they have to prove themselves. Beast Coast obviously looking like they have the pieces of the puzzle. We're on the flip side of things. LG, they've had a little bit of a season. They only remain two players from the team and they go and opt to get more rookies. And, you know, we didn't see too much of them in their first week. In theory, Beast Coast has the capability to be the better team here. I think their ceiling is extremely high. Yeah. They're unproven. You're combining experience with a rookie who knows what you're going to get? I'm going to say, it's not that the players themselves are unproven, but in this specific yeah, context, correct. they are. So let's dive into Beast Coast, this brand new look BC roster that we are seeing play for the first time. They could not play a game last week because of server problems and the way we rescheduled, but now we see them in the server. Gavini, Gunner, Hot and Cold, and Spirits have all been to their own myriad of lands, but Diffuser is jumping in on this team for the first time, and we really don't know what to expect quite yet. And there's really not that much pressure on Diffuser's shoulders either. Speaking to 
to the players. They obviously know he's a good pickup, and they want to give him that flexibility and give him that ceiling to grow. Not only is having a ceiling a comfortable spot to just develop your skills, but having the players that he has on his team, obviously with the amount of experience, the amount of leadership, and having great entries to open up the door obviously makes things that much easier. The thing with this team is that they have so much experience on an international stage, not just a domestic one, right? True. These guys have traveled all over, played all sorts of different regions, but this is what their focus is going to be on. This domestic play, can they get out of this next few weeks and make something happen. Well, let's figure out what the guys had to say about this team forming up for the first time. We had a chance to sit down with Hot and Cold and figure out what the hell this new Beast Coast roster is about to look like. Hello, my name is Matthew Hot and Cold Stevens. I'm a support player for Beast Coast. My older brother, he helped get me into esports in general because we used to watch and play League of Legends. And CS was like my first two games where I like saw what esports could really be. And I feel like uh my dream of becoming an esports player like grew from that i honestly think the biggest thing was just finding that right team on reddit you know thankfully i found a team that wanted a grind i was just like the young almost 18 year old coming in and they were smarter than me better than me at the time so i felt like they really helped me like step up my game i think our team's kind of like a team of misfits you know like we have multiple people that have been dropped off you know top rosters we have uh someone hasn't played pro league yet, ready to show himself. We all have something to prove. So um, we're all putting in the work, making strats every day. You know, it's not just like one of us is doing it and the rest are kind of chilling. Like we're all putting in the work. Once we get our identity, like just, just keep rolling the strats in, you know, getting new looks against teams, like learning how to play other styles. I mean, that'll, that'll really help us because the NAL and just uh, all the leagues in general, honestly, they, they all got different teams that play different styles nowadays. There's not just like, you know, one region plays this one style anymore. All, all my teammates, uh, they trust me and I trust them. I think people are going to be surprised uh, what we have to offer. Well, every player on this team has had ample opportunity to get themselves into the server and get ready. Some of them have had a break for the past couple months coming into the stage. But the big thing that we need to note, not a single one of these players on this Beast Coast roster have ever teamed with one another, either in Tier 1 or Tier 2. This seems like a crazy statistical anomaly because among the four experienced players, Gavini, Hot and Cold, Spirits, and Gunner, you would think that at some point they would have crossed paths. I could have sworn, wait a minute, didn't Gunner join Parabellum? That's the Spirits team that he was raised on. Well, it turns out that he was Spirits' replacement on yeah. Parabellum. So they never crossed paths there, just never playing with one another. It's going to hurt your chances. Have you ever heard of the invisible string theory where it's like you pass, you're in passing with people like your soulmate in a way <laughs> until <laughs> yeah. the right moment where you're meant to be with them. And I think that's the story of this team, right? It's just every single one of those players, like Hot and Cold said, has obviously been on top teams and they want to get back to that position. So now yeah. the invisible strings pulling them all together. Everybody has passed one another like ships in the night as far as NA roster goes, but no longer. The thing is they all have a ton of land experience. Well, one of them has a ton. A couple others have been to a few. Hot and Cold has been to 13 international land events in his career as a part of Pro League or Majors or SIs. Spirits, Gunner, and Gav have also gone to lands, but you combine all of them together, they've only been to 11. So Hot and Cold's been to more than double the amount of lands as the rest of the guys on his roster. Even though Hot and Cold does have more than double, I mean, just being able to go to a land and being on a team that can make those events gives you untangible quality qualities that other players from good players to great players it, it makes a huge difference because it shows you how to play in a team how to be able to bounce off of other players and i think that's why it puts a player like diffuser in the perfect spot with all of these players with that experience actually speaking of diffuser if he's the rookie the one guy who we're going to be looking at the most because he has the most to prove because we just don't know who he is yet how important is it to bring a guy like him onto the team because He's in your wheelhouse. You cast him before. Exactly. I got to see him play in Element 2, and he and his team, Envy, went on an absolutely incredible one run undefeated the entire time. Only dropped two maps in the playoff bracket on the way to the victory. Wow. That's something that doesn't happen often, even in T2, where you do have this imbalance. The craziest thing is that among that pretty stacked roster of Envy, that included Fens, Kiru, Jibo, and Kobe, players that most people may not have heard of if you're only following T1. Yeah. He was actually the fourth rated player 
on that roster coming out. Oh, of he wasn't state. even the top guy. Wasn't even the top guy. And that you may think, what the heck is he doing here in T1? He was able to set himself apart by not just his ability to get kills and look impressive. He was consistent. He was reliable. And when it came to tryouts, he caught a lot of attention. Obviously, they picked him up specifically for the role that he plays. He's being put on this flex lurk role where he has a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility. And I think that's going to give him, like we said before, that little extra bit of room, wiggle room to develop as a player. Well, let's talk about their opponents real quick, because again, another set of guys that you specifically have casted before is this Luminosity core. Three of these guys were together on the old LG back when they played in tier two, and everyone else is somebody you've crossed paths with at some point. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Seeing all these guys make that leap. You have Eddie, Silent, and Kickstro. Three people that I've been following since their time under the Wichita Wolves banner. Oh my God, NACL, dude. Wow. early, I think, what, 2022, 2021. Remember those really hype roster videos? Oh, they were great. Then? They yeah. did such a good job with that. But the crazy part was these three, they had exceptional finishes in NACL at the time, three stages in a row. That entire year they dominated. It was a first place finish as the Wolves and then back to back second place finishes under the Luminosity banner. And they show a lot of promise, and my biggest fear when it comes to Luminosity is because they are all so new, they don't necessarily have a storied veteran on the team. It leaves a lot of error, it leaves a lot of area for mistakes late, mid to late round. And I think that's where we saw a lot of that happen in the SSG game, is obviously when push came to shove, SSG always had an answer, they always had a response, and Luminosity just wasn't in the right spot to respond back. Let's talk more about that Space Station game just in detail. It was a 3-3 first half, but then they shift sides and they can't win any attacks, which might be a clubhouse specific thing, it might be a new team figuring everything out for the most part, but some of the guys on this team, at least to you, Fox, seem like they still have some good redeemable qualities potential for what they could do in the future. Absolutely. I mean, every player on the team was putting up some generally good statistics when it came to their game against SSG. It wasn't necessarily a statistical issue on where they weren't able to perform. Obviously, we pulled up Silent, Wi-Fi, and Hat specifically. Everybody on the team was within a one kill or two kill difference from each other. And it shows that they're obviously able to put the statistics up. When it comes to a 1v1, more often than not, they're able to handle their own, especially against a team like SSG. They were putting up a fight. But when it came to the late round, SSG knew exactly what they needed to do. They waited, they bide their time. And in the last 30 seconds, nobody stepped up from Luminosity to be able to make that final call, the final decision and say, hey, this is what we need to do. And that's what scares me with Luminosity is nobody has that capability right now from calling. Someone needs to come out of the fire. They and might eventually, up. but right now, maybe not so much. Exactly. But that's the thing with a map like Clubhouse is that on the defensive side where they perform just fine, you can have a lot of your imperfections kind of tucked behind the curtain and hidden away. When you switch over to the attack, that's when you get exposed and in a big yeah. way. Mm. Luminosity did that late round inability to be flexible, got exposed. SSG were put together on defense and Luminosity struggled to play as a strong unit. They were getting a little bit fragmented, pushing in one by one, something that they're gonna have to avoid if they go to a map like that again. Which again, might be a new player problem, could be a, a rookie problem, could just be the way that this team functions. We will figure that out over time. But we're going back to Clubhouse mm. again. So Beast Coast with this team, never played a map before. We're getting a grand introduction to what this five stack looks like. But for LG, they had the option to do bank or club at the very end. They go for club. What do we think? It's a scary position if you're LG because Beast Coast has no information on them yet and you've already played Clubhouse and you didn't look too hot on it. So obviously that screams to me like, hey, we went back in the footage. We were able to adapt and work on things, make things easier. But Beast Coast has no information on them. They're completely in the driver's seat for this game. And obviously we talked a lot of negatives about Luminosity, but I really do think there is a little bit of limelight. And I think if there's an area where they can show it, it'll be against a new team like Beast Coast as well. All right, well, let's get predictions done here. Uh, obviously neither Lax or Jesse is with us right now. So Fox, you can still do your pick. What do you think? I'm going to put my faith in the Beast Coast right now. Uh, right now? Yeah, right now I'm going to put my faith in it. They obviously played it today. So depending on how they perform today will affect my prediction at the end of the day. All right, sounds so good. Beast Coast. You got the Beast Coast. We're locking that in. But Jonah, here's the thing. Yeah. We, on short notice, we couldn't include <laughs> you in the grand prediction competition for You're the North American title. You're telling me I can't just title. run out of here with the, with the I, I mean, if you did, I'd have to chase you down legally fair, because fair. that thing is the property of, of the body studio. Slam. Nice. It's the WWE. He'd nice. body slam you on that. <laughs> He'd pick you up. But here's the thing. You are the representative for Laxing's picks this week. Yes, I am. No matter what happens, you do, all you have to do is just say what he said, and if it's wrong, it doesn't rub off on you in a bad way. It's, it's a great system. He's got a pick. I'll tell you that pick, and in this case, 
it's Beast Coast. That's fair enough to say. There you go. Don't think that's too much of a surprise. But listen, if he's wrong, we can make fun of him after this. <laughs> I have no problem with that. And if he's right, I'll say I agreed with him. It's perfect. Yep. There's no way in which you lose in this scenario. It's really win, it's win, win. Win. Yeah. It, it totally works out. All right. It's about time we finally see what this new Beast Coast roster can do in the NAL with a team that has never played before. Beast Coast and Luminosity, week two of the 2024 season starts right now. Well, thank you so very much. I'm excited to get into this. And you and I are actually making our NAL debut because last week the matches ended up being postponed. So you and I get our first look at some of these newer teams and we get to start off with two basically brand new teams. Well, as the screen says, it's just a best of one. We've got five matches for you today, starting off with Beast Coast, and we'll be ending the day with Beast Coast as well. They'll be playing up against OXG because it was a rescheduled match. For those that haven't followed along, one of the 10 teams in the North American League has effectively been disqualified. So as such, they're not around anymore, meaning, there are only nine teams, and because of that, there will only be four matches a day. So the reason why there's five matches is because some of those games that were played last Thursday that weren't able to go through have now been moved over. Operator bands are coming in, Nick. And you can see on your screen, Ying has been an almost constant ban at the top level for about a year now. It's not really all that surprising. Uh, I, 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 I was going to say... It's, and three times so far through the matches, now a fourth to be added to it as well. No longer available. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Well, first bomb say that they'll go to is down below, Nick. This is relatively common. On a map like Clubhouse, you've got four bomb sites that are all decently viable, though the bar stage part of the map typically sees the lowest amount of play. I've been part of it. I was gone for a second. I missed you. I Thank missed you, you for taking over, taking full control here. You said operator bands, so let's talk about it, right? Okay. Power yeah, yeah. operators. Go, go in. Go off. I'm going to go in here. Tuparu and, or Tuparau rather, and Mavergan here. It's going to be a lot easier now but also hard at the same time to beat up these walls normally when uh you know when two brows open you gotta stop bringing out the maverick with both these operators being gone i'm gonna go back to more old school style of siege we could see some bandit tricking we could see those speed jammers be coming out but uh the big i think play here for the attacker is gonna be the ying ying is such a strong operator to like make things easy when you're lg when you're less experienced roster, not having someone like Ying available that simplifies the attack and rounds, that's gonna make it difficult. And I think LG, they will live or they will die on the attack inside, and that's what they're gonna start. Oh, that's very poor timing for hot and cold Oof. as a Valcam gets thrown outside. Only 10 seconds until the Valcam disconnects, meaning that you have a very small window to use that information. But you can't really hop on the cam if there's a logic bomb, and that's exactly what Wi-Fi does. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it costs a valuable piece of utility for the Valkyrie of Hot. The Valkyrie mounts about a fourth and last 10 seconds anyway. Opening kill though goes for LG Cyber to trade back oh, instant there from East Coast. This is a lot of fighting going on very early on, and I guess if you're a defending team, you want to try to bring the heat to them as quickly as possible. It ends up with a 2v2 with a minute off of the board. <laughs> very early action. That is an insane thing to say out loud. Eddie and Silent will remain for Luminosity. As for Beast Coast, it's up to Gunner and Spirits. And Silent is very close to being able to strike into the site. I don't know if maybe he had some issues there with the soft destruction, but it sure appeared like he had one of the defenders locked down early on. Gunner dies, it's all up to Spirits, who's now going to rotate all the way upstairs. Main floor towards the bomb site. Silent and Eddie have full control. Eddie with diffuser in hand. As now Spirits goes over towards Kitchen to open up a sight line. But Eddie is successful in getting the diffuser planted. Dies to Spirits, as that's some nice hatch play. Leaving it all up to the Finca of Silent, who still has some utility, by the way. One grenade in pocket as well. 
as an adrenal surge. Spirit's retake will happen through Moto. He's got the, not a rotate hole, but at least an opportunity to see over towards blue. Silent is going to sit there and not move a muscle. Just on the other side of the wall, looking over towards dummies. Spirits will fire away, giving his position, but Silent will be holding this door angle, and Silent decides to engage. He's good for it. LMG's got a buff at the start of year nine. They're not as good as they were a couple years ago, but they're better than where they were, especially if you pair them with Adrenal Surge. Nice to see LMG's make a return at the pro level. Luminosity takes the first round off of that very early set of skirmishing. I do think that the uh, thing LMG has a fear factor to it as well, because if you're a defending player back when LMGs were terrorizing the scene, it just, you hear that LMG start firing, you go, oh my god, it's happening again. It feels so hard to win gunfights against the thing LMG, especially if you like Mute SMG11 or Smoke SMG11, where you only have 17 bullets yourself. But that round that we just witnessed, there were no layers from the defense of Beast Coast. They were happy to meet the attackers on the roam, fighting early in the round. And this is not the typical clubhouse style that we see from Tier 1 Rainbow Six Siege. Normally you see defenders early roam, kill a couple of drones, fall back, play out the bomb set itself. Beast Coast, a little bit too eager to get into the action, thinking, hey, we can just out-duel LG one-to-one -one in gunplay, in player experience. And of course, in that previous round, they got heavily punished from that. And they're gonna go straight back to basement again. Very big indicator here that they deem that they did things that were silly last round that shouldn't really have happened. They're gonna play the same bomb site with basically the same or similar setup and just make those micro decisions a bit differently. Not seek, not seek out those engagements early and try and play a bit more together to save those trades. We'll watch the deployment of these Valcams by on cold with great interest as he was playing over towards blue. Oh my god, three separate members of LG. Hot and you're about to get pounced upon by Kick's throw, but Hot and Cold shuts him down. Nitro Cell goes out, cannot find a second. But Hot will get away with one moving over towards Dirt Tunnel. He doesn't really do any serious damage. Besides being dropped in blue, might be retrievable. Spirit playing from above is. There goes one of the Goyo canisters from Beast Coast, killing Houghton. Misfortune when it comes to that utility, but Spirits from above will deal with this Luminosity aggression quite well. Three kills and will immediately head upstairs to further rotate, leaving Eddie to walk in empty-handed. Already better, right? We see the layers now from BC playing more close together, and now LG, they gotta work for this round. He can't just walk in unless Sion finds an angle here. There could be a gap, but no, this time, multiple defenders on side together, shuts it down. And he will drop and be... I don't want to say disoriented, but at least nearsighted, as he's killed by Gavin inside of blue. Gavin playing in the bomb site, just firing away with P90 originally before unsheathing the SMG-11. East Coast really want early aggression on these downstairs defenses. I gotta say, two rounds in a row where they go all in to try and slow down this entry from Luminosity. It's something that we've actually seen for a couple months of top-level play now, Nick. We noted at the Six Invitational how defender-sided this meta was, and part of the response seemingly been Defenders teams getting very bomb. aggressive on defense down. very early and trying to basically present these obstacles, these speed bumps, hurdles, whatever you want to call them for the attackers. Didn't really yeah. work all that well in the first round for Beast Coast, though it was a valiant effort. Second round, looking much better. Yeah, the simple version of how to explain defense right now often is nothing should be for free for the attackers. They should not be entering the building without being contested, without feeling pressure. And this goes for pretty much every single map. It's not all that common where we see defenders bunker up, just turtling on the bomb side itself. Even on Bank, for example, we often see teams play five guys in the basement. Or well, these days, you always have a soft room in open area. When you play clubhouse on basement, Defenders, they start top four, and then they fall back in stages. So this does just make the attack that much difficult because you still only have three minutes to work with. We got so much more map to fight for. So attackers naturally, their forces speed up. Mistakes tend to happen. A couple of gunfights that go the wrong way. Maybe you miss throwing a play in a certain room. And then just like that, you might lose a member very early in the round. For this one though, utility play. Bandit tricking on the primary wall with a mirror window. This mirror can get popped, then BC, they're gonna have six impact grenades to use to further deny the wall if Eddie and Thermite wants to try and breach it open, so that's what they're gonna do here. Pop the mirror intentionally, now they can impact trick, and there's bandits pre-placed as well. The EMPs will go off just to open things up in the hands of Hat, who's got two remaining in back pocket. There's that hard breach that you've mentioned from before. 
I know that the site changes have been talked about quite a lot, but I'm just so used to that site in particular only being on the Russian weapons. Seeing it on yeah. Wamai is very intriguing to say the least. It makes me stop for a second and go, wait a million. You're not that's one of not right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not right. It's supposed to be on like Kapkin or Finka or Tachanka, but you can't really get as aggressive, I suppose, when you're defending this cash CCTV site upstairs. Playing it very standard on the side of Beast Coast. Yeah, they've lost that main breach, but maybe spirits can actually get quite aggressive here. This is an ego challenge if I've ever seen on Gunner, the very first kill. Ooh. Eddie and Kixrow on the board. Kixrow with two, in fact, on a spirits and Gunner for being finished off on his own. It's a 2v3. We're halfway through the round. Okay, well, one thing that will remain a constant through these three rounds, Nick, is that both of these teams are bringing the heat. They are. They really are fighting it. I'm actually surprised that Beast Coast not just letting them play out the rounds in those like 5v5s and 4v4s because look at the player names on the left and right hand side of your screen. You would think Beast Coast which is just that much more experienced, that much better. So when they play those even numbers, they play out the strategies, you'd think they'd be favored here. But in the gunfights, LG, they come out ahead once again, three versus two, but they have spent all their fire and smoke on the Kabatov Wi-Fi. So now they're a bit more limited, but at the same time, with that being said, they have a lot of time to work with. 40 seconds, one man up, etc. Make their way towards Pop Garage, try and establish a plant here. One C4 from Hot and Cold could, of course, take down the first planter, but they have two options here. They have one guy covering main breach, covering both defenders' entry paths towards the bump side, but they have two players who can go for a plant, only one C4 on defense. Fuser losing his reticle now as 15 seconds remain in this round. The bandit pounced upon. Eddie's inside of the site and he picks up two. Hot and cold thought he might survive a little bit longer, but it is all for naught. This has been a back and forth struggle between these two teams. Do we see another cash CCTV defense or do you think they opt for the tertiary bomb site and go across to gym bedroom or even go downstairs to bar and stage. I don't think you go back, frankly. I mean, I think CCTV as a second bomb site is always a bit of a surprise. It, it's such a vulnerable bomb site to just the capital alone. You know, you're always gonna take Cowboy Grafters and defense. Enemy brings the capital. You're gonna get fired, like fired below your feet. You're gonna die. And that's pretty much what happened last round. They bring the capital, they force the gunfights, they play inside of blue, they shut down the, the save attempt from Beast Coast lashing out. And that seems to be the game plan right now. LG will make a move somewhere. Beast Coast will make an aggressive response fighting towards the attackers. LG are holding those angles. It truly comes down to the individual gunfights right now. If Spirits won the gunfight on bottom blue when he swung the doorway, maybe that round plays out differently because then Beast Coast has the man advantage. But because Kixor got the double kill, well, LG are favorite then. So it really comes down to which team can play either more together, guarantee that their teammates get traded in those gunfights, that you never lose a member for nothing, or of course, individual heroics. As I said, I want to see Beast Coast play maybe a little bit slower here. They are the more experienced team. Make LG fight strategically, right? The disc spoke about this as well. LG, they have kind of experience. They don't have a caller. They might look very indecisive on the attack and round in the end game stages where they have to make those decisions. They have to problem solve. And so far, Beast Coast, they haven't even let them work for it. They're just storing bodies at the problem. I wouldn't push that against LG because they can shoot back. It's also worth noting that this is Beast Coast's first official game, right? They won via disqualification yeah. all the way back on the first play day and what was originally a 7-0 victory. I think that's been walked back. I think it's just 0-0s zero across the board now, unless everybody gets yeah. a 7-0 victory. Oh, and this back. Beast Coast team, as you can see from the left side, is completely assembled of new players. The desk talked about this so well. Well, the couch talked about this, actually. I suppose there's no desk. <laughs> These five players have never competed together. That is astonishing. They're all quite experienced with the exception of Diffusers, but you've got to get those game day reps in. Scrims are just ultimately not enough. Beast Coast riding the favorable side of Clubhouse, at least for the time being. We'll wait to see if anything changes with this being a defender-sided meta. It's been months of the defenders being in such a strong position. I don't know if it will. Halfway point now of this round, and the only real action that's happened is between Spirits and Wi-Fi. Everything else has been pretty par for the course. Luminosity going about opening that jacuzzi wall and now staring down the windows, looking into this gym and bedroom bombsite. 
Yep, more like a proper 5v5, but as I say, that why if I can still be a kill on Tiglona, who dies in the middle of the site itself. But yeah, we see LG going through the strategical elements right now. Breaching walls, opening barricades, getting rid of castles, etc. And then... Beast Coast's response has been, let's sit back, make them work for it. I like this change up here. The only issue is, no C4s below. Hot and Cold and Bandit playing that barbed wire. LG on the windows, ready to go in. I don't know if Beast Coast can shut this down. Oh, the first oh, Eddie, no! He doesn't look down with the vault and gets ensnared in the frost mat. Finished off by Diffuser. Yeah, you can get yourself back up, but not when you've got several sets of eyes looking in your direction. Both teams now trading blows as... Diffuser picks up another from this same spot. Wi-Fi starting to streak for LG as Diffuser looks for a rotate over towards construction. Diffuser, last alive of spirits, has been humbled. And a vault in. A position that Diffuser can capitalize off of. He's just waiting for the play. There's the vault in. Very limited HP on Wi-Fi. Diffuser looking for more as Silent secures the kill on the spirits and Diffuser will play keep away. Waiting for Silent to get close to him. No Diffuser in hand for Luminosity. They pick it up at the last second, but it'll be a little bit too late. As Diffuser walks in, Silent might be able to get this one down. Oh. And Diffuser hops on the Diffuser for the counter disable. And Beast Coast will tie the game. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but if that Frostmat doesn't find the injure on the initial entry there, that entire round might be a W for the attack inside because they have to cover. When you have two players on the gym window, one's going to jump in, one's going to hold the cross. If that first member dies, especially in a silly way like a frost mat, well, now the cover has to jump in and become the planter, and then the cover is no longer there, essentially. So, very small things here going sideways. I like the setup. They recognized, hey, there's no C4 below. Hey, we got an opening pick onto Gunner. He's not going to hold this side. They found the gap successfully. Strategically, a good round for Luminosity. But again, very small details there can really change the outcome of these rounds. Beast Coast, they tie things up 2-2. They're going to go back to that basement bomb side. Third attempt, one for one so far. And they have a new kind of trick up their sleeve. More of a turtle situation, right? They're playing the Warden, they're playing the Mirror, they're playing Omai, a lot of utility. And they're hiding Gunner on the Kaid inside the bomb side. He's hiding behind that black box position. Because if he gets droned out, then the attackers know, hey, they have a Kaid. We gotta play the Thatcher here because Maverick is banned. We gotta get those hatches opened up. LG, they might not have found Gunner hiding on the Kaid, but they have just stalked the Thatcher from the beginning saying, we know what might be lurking downstairs. We're not gonna risk not having the option to open up those hatches. So they will, again, strategically make a good call here. Bring the Thatcher regardless. Attack, I repick really the Monty. So that's probably gonna be their win condition here. Monty can push third tunnel. He can push blue, can push down bottom main stairs. A lot of options for the attack. Not sure if this holds true with every single region up to this point, but the shield rework, I'm not entirely sold on it being a benefit to operators like Monty, especially if they can't get extended. Monty seems to have far less of a threat behind him, I suppose yeah. you could say. You and I obviously didn't cast the NAL. We've seen Monty in a bunch of other regions, but when we did watch Brazil, I, I don't really think the Monty was anywhere near as potent as it used to be, especially in Brazil, the region where they love their shield operators and most of the top teams have somebody who is quite talented when it comes to playing on those shields. NA is no slouch when it comes to shields as well. Lately, it's oh. been forest on the Blitz and the Monty, leading the way for Space Station. Now, all this to be said, we're at the halfway point of the round, and Luminosity has cleared out that main floor very click quickly. This is the third defense of the bottom floor bomb site for Beast Coast, and the first time that they are all relatively safe sitting in or near the bomb site. No off-site play for Beast Coast as was characterized, or as the first two rounds were characterized. The big question here is, where is AD going to go? He's outside dirt right now. Grim on the blue hatch can fake out the bees, get some pressure. Munchie should be the driving force for this execute. He's got the fuser and of course, extend the shield. You can walk in anywhere that you see fits. So Eddie has to make a decision now. There it is, dirt tunnel, yellow ping is coming out. But what can they do about this? No grenades, no capital fire. So while they have information on the player positions, they can't necessarily clear them out. It looks like a blue take here, but Munchie and dirt, 
We see Y on the blue hatch, silent down inside our oil pit. They might just try and go for an execute here with those yellow, those yellow pings. They're just waiting to dig in around blue, and it will come down to what I assume will be a messy brawl. What? The diffuser looks the wrong way. Monty of Eddie being accompanied by Kixrow through dirt. Luminosity absolutely clobbering Beast Coast right now. Hot and Cold and Gunner will attempt to retake. A nice shot by Hot and Cold. He's only good enough for one. His Wi-Fi goes huge in the dying moments. And Luminosity wins yet another round. This first half, incredibly close so far between these teams. I think you can tell that Beast Coast, they, uh, they definitely are trying to figure out like, their pace right now, whether to go fast or to go slow. The first couple rounds, you know, as you mentioned, they play super aggressive fighting. You know, I would say too much. They're fighting constantly and willingly. Then, now they're playing too passive. They're giving up so much space to the attackers. They're not upstairs in bar and garage killing the couple of drones in the beginning of the round. They see Monty dirt, they let him be. And then they just let the attackers kind of walk over them. They walk in dirt, they find the first injured, they walk in blue, they win the gunfights. Beast Coast are now willingly giving up so much space. So it seems like an all or nothing style approach. And this commonly is an issue when it comes to, they're just a new team. They're trying to figure out how to approach this. You know, when you haven't played together, you know, with any of these players before, there's a lot of benefits because there's no bias. There's no predetermined, oh, I know this guy, we're good buddies, so he's going to back me up on my opinions. But at the same time, you also do not have any synergy. So you really got to figure out what your play style is going to be, which players are good at what different things, and what operators all the players should be playing, what positions, etc. So I like the Beast Coast have been to experiment here. They've gone basement four times, and they're gonna have a different approach all of those four times. Now they're playing more dynamic setup, right? This is pretty much like the old quote-unquote ASUS G basement roam, where you play Mossy, Mute, and Cass. I mean, this is basically straight out of Hot and Cold's playbook from his previous team saying, guys, I know how to play this round, just listen to my callouts and like reinforce these walls, etc." And Hot and Cold will play in the middle. They'll play in the bar, a most pressured position here, and where you got, you got to hold this bar hatch for the fallback for your teammates and yourself. And you got Spirits and Gavin upstairs roaming top floor. I don't know if Diffuser's been spotted over by Lounge or not. The player Diffuser, by the way, instead of the actual <laughs> Diffuser. Oh boy. I feel like you and I actually talked about this with the Ace, the Operator, mm -hmm. just last week. And now here we are yet again talking about how there's a player named after something similar to the game itself. <laughs> it will confuse me. I'm saying yeah. it will confuse other people. I, I take back what I said about the Monty, by the way. The shield play walking through Dirt Tunnel was a huge component of how Luminosity was able to do so much work onto this bomb site. But how do you approach it here? It's hot and cold, has nestled himself. Right around bar, looking towards kitchen. He's got that kill hole in the wall. He'll be joined by Diffuser now, who drops. He gets picked off immediately by stage. My, my, that's not the start that they wanted for Beast Coast. They're doing a limited kitchen dirt take. All you take here on attack is you take office top floor control, so there's no verticality in kitchen. You take kitchen itself, and you go dirt. This is a pre like pretty basic uh, like rank strat for this map, map in particular. So Eddie can walk into site. He finds the information. They have kitchen, etc. That's it. Spirit's got to hold the sign, but he does so successfully. Eddie doesn't bother to look over towards Dummy. Silent now in. I nails his shots onto both Spirits and Gunner. Another 2v2. This seems to be the story of this entire matchup is that we are perpetually in 2v2s. Though the clock at the moment favors Beast Coast more than in previous rounds. Only 40 seconds left to go. Silent itching for yet another, but he'll be nearsighted in blue before escaping back over. Hot and cold punishing him, and Gavin shuts Wi-Fi down. And we are no closer to a resolution through this first half. Both teams showing promise, both teams showing struggles, and we'll see what happens now as Beast Coast will move to attack, and Luminosity will try to tackle defense. I mean, I think Eddie might have made a bit of a slip up there in that previous round. The whole point of that strat is that you'll take kitchen, you'll open up the floor, and maybe open the hatch. Monty goes in dirt, walks into side. The only player, or place rather, a player could be on is third box by blue. Or maybe in the 
the bottom main staircase hallway. That's really the only two options because when you open the kitchen floor, you cannot be in the back of the B bomb site. Eddie walks in, doesn't check the blue angle, dies. That's Monty, right? Shouldn't really happen. He should walk in, stop planting. The guy in dirt covers blue. The guy in the kitchen covers the rest of the verticality. That should really be the strategic approach there. Instead, Eddie gets blindsided, gets shot from the side of the back, gets shut down, and then they try and pick up the pieces there. Of course, Beast Ghost, again, they had a good read on what they had to do in that strat, where their player positions were the most important, and they find the victory. But I think if you're LG, you're perfectly happy to 3-3 half on Clubhouse and attack. And now the question is, can they defend in a simple way? Because the teamwork that we saw from LG was quite good. They're playing together, they're going for trades, they always have two people or three working together for an objective, and that's the same kind of style we expect to see on defense. We help one another, accomplish these small mini executes, and then try and play together. Beast Ghost, they gotta have more coordination on attack, because if you get picked off in these individual gunfights with nobody trading you back, you will fall on the attack inside. You don't have the map control to work with, you don't have the defensive setup, so now you gotta play offense, but you gotta do it together. Kickstar getting a lot of information as the Solus now roams upstairs. We'll see a duel between spirits on Deimos and whichever operator he finds canceled the current duel. Kickstar still just dealing with those drones as they come his way inside a construction, banded it off. There's no Kaid ban. So the fact that we're seeing teams prioritize bandit isn't a surprise, but certainly is not as usual. Kaid is typically the operator that you'll see to handle these. I imagine that because of the different areas that need to be covered, having four bandit batteries to do it is quite nice. East Coast, after taking about a minute off of the clock, will have to deal with those bandit batteries, but have managed to work their way into the other side of the top floor, breaking through Jacuzzi Wall. Now, one of the issues with playing Kaid is that if the enemy brings up the Thatcher, well, one EMP, Kaid clock gets disabled, wall gets opened up. You can't really trick without the two brow when it comes to Kaid. Once Bandit, you can. And also, as you mentioned, there are small walls to cover. Those four Bandit batteries can just net you more shutdown construction on the exterior, on the interior, and of course, CC wall. And you have impact tricks. Four impacts in pocket. None being tossed out though, wall will get opened up here, hot and cold uh, gets the job done for free. So Beast goes in a really good pace right now, a full minute to work with, ton of utility, Grim Beast, the demo scans, grenades, smoke grenades, etc. They're looking like they're in prime position to take this bomb site. Gunner might be the one to lead the charge, Wi-Fi is down as that's a kill for the Grim. Still three canisters containing those bees to find out where the defenders on Luminosity sit and put them into uncomfortable positions. A duel could still be had by spirits. As there goes, well, it looked for a second that death mark would go out. The death tracker will find the soulless. So kicks for smart. and spirits will now be in a dance to the death. Hot and cold getting the diffuser down. And right now there's no real challenge for it. It's successful and he peels off. As kicks has been dropped, Eddie and Hat are the last two standing for luminosity. The only two with a pulse. Down oh, goes diffuser, what? it's a trade. Hat needs to be picked back up. Eddie, jumping on over, might have the time to do it. You have to be very careful though, 25 seconds left before the attackers win. Both these two players from Luminosity will now work together. Hot and Cold's in a very prime position to deal with this. Down goes Hat to Gunner, and Eddie swings as Hot and Cold pops up from the exterior, outside of the building. He gets a kill on the inside. Beast Coast successful in their very first attack. I gotta say, you know, when new operators come out into Siege Pro Play, I always look at, okay, how can teams utilize these operators to kind of change the game, change the meta, or just do something very unique? In that previous round, it's very simple, but it's highly effective. Damon's playing downstairs in bar double door, and they know when they go for the plant, Solid's gonna try and deny it by walking into stock lounge and impact on either floor. Well, what do you do? You start a duel with the Solus by playing in that same similar position. You can see exactly where Solus is, and the enemy knows that. So Solus plays far back, doesn't go for plant deny because he's probably gonna die trying. So one simple operator here in that previous round, shots down with a few win conditions LG had to deny the plant, which was to go below with the Solus information. And it's small things like that that can play a massive role in these rounds. And because Deimos is a new operator to Rainbow Six Siege, players don't have the exact knowledge of, okay, how is this operator going to be, be played? 
unless you played that exact scenario in scrims before, you probably didn't think about it because it's a new operator. Beast Ghost, they are flexing their possibilities here. You said that Brazil, they have good, uh, they have good shield play, and they have a couple players as well. Spirits, complete menace on the blitz. Oh, it was a shield though. That was the Monty. He probably would have been fine regardless, but very close bumping attempt there from Silent. But Spirits was a phenomenal blitz player throughout his career so far. Monty, he can play it. It's not what he's known for, but Monty with the rework works similar to a Blitz now. You can sprint, you can go fast, you can go for those aggressive plays, but you have less passive pressure. You can go for hip fires. It mainly doesn't injure people, but knocks them down. And look at this, aggression, 3v1. That's oh, free. they time it so well. As the shield come out from Spirits, as Gavin gets the kill on Eddie to start off the show, only 45 seconds into the round. Perfect. It's a good I mean, bit of presence in the mirror as well. No Nitro Cell will be available. The only anti-plant will be there from Kicks Row on the mute with the Nitro Cell in pocket. I suppose if you want to call those Goyo canisters anti-plant, then by all means, Kicks Row using that Nitro Cell that we just made note of. So not a lot of explosive possibilities. Several oh. players still on this top floor, a very extended roam, and it's working out as Luminosity pick off Hot and Cold. It's a really good isolation onto Eddie. The shield goes first, gets the melee, two players gun him down as well, but now Beast goes stalling things Whoa. out here, falling by the wayside, Wi-Fi through the window, gets his second kill in the round. Beast goes, they had that early advantage, things were looking great, but now they have nowhere to go, it seems. Still got the Monty in. Be your focal point and guide you towards these bomb sites. But what a struggle it's been from Beast Coast to drone out that top floor. Almost seems like Beast Coast are languishing in this part of the map. Well, it's a shutdown now on Gavin as Kicks Row ascends blue stairs. Diffuser now nearsighted, tackling main stairs with the Monty of Spirits still up. But as we say time and time again, the fewer opponents, or rather the more opponents and the fewer teammates you have, the less effective a Monty gets unless you're in a 1v1. As the observers are also showing us, the diffuser needs to be retrieved, so that will kill some more time. Excellent rebuff from Luminosity of Beast Coast Entrance. Yeah, I mean, the, the big issue is just that the Monty doesn't see any opponents, right? You find the first player, great, you get the kill to Eddie, but then Monty is just like on the other side of the map, not where the action is, not where the enemy roamers are either. Now things are falling apart. 2v4 it's on different Beast Coast, but they need to land some great shots here from the diffuser. Diffuser very narrowly missing out on an opportunity. We'll have to confront the Black Mirror as he looks for more and more kills. Completely disoriented. Oh Both boy. remaining players from Beast Coast <laughs> stuck inside a blue being watched as Hat and Wi-Fi get the final two kills. And Luminosity answers back. These teams are so evenly matched so far on this map, Nick. Oh, they are. It is really a back and forth trying to figure out each other's playstyle. And I will say, for the side of LG, when they recognized Monty was on the board, they spread out a lot. They recognized that Monty cannot be everywhere all at once. So wherever he's going to be attacking from, we're going to look to make plays on the other half of the map. So Monty went towards like that gym bedroom portion. Where did all the kills happen? On the CCTV connector side. So it's almost okay, we don't want to deal with the Monty, great play there. But then I want to see a switch up from Beast Coast, where Spirit says, guys, there's nobody in Master Bedroom, I need to go somewhere else to help you guys, because the whole point of playing Monty is you can just run through the building. No one can really stop you on the roam. There's no smoke, there's not really any C4s, and even the Freya's, again, you just gotta bait them out, you go like nice and slow. Spirit has to try and find enemies with intent. It almost looked like he was avoiding enemy confrontation, but all his teammates could find the, the, the fights regardless. Now we see a different kind of shield play. A clash. On Clubhouse, on the upstairs hold of Gym Bedroom. Now, we don't see this all that often, but uh, every single season, Parker, I make a tier list for what I think, you know, the operator strengths, like for ranked and competitive. I have Clash in this kind of like sleeper, low-key, really strong operator that no one seems to play. Not in ranked, but in competitive play. But Clash, as you know, and as I know, it's incredibly frustrating to deal with. And one thing about the current attacking lineup for the current meta, nades you can no longer cook, and they're rarely played. Sophia is not like a normal operator in the current meta. Neither is Kali. You don't really have uh, counters for the Clash operator in your regular lineup. 
you have to go like kind of far out of your way to deal with the clash so in the current meta i could really see this operator work out i want to see how wi-fi uses this operator i want to see how lg does not play around it because this could be the defining factor for this particular round's outcome the only real counter directly that they have from Beast Coast would be the nades in pocket. I guess you could also loop the Flores into that conversation with the Rotero drones. However, the timer on the Rotero drone is three seconds. So that's plenty of time for a clash to be able to get out of harm's way. Rotero drones can do a deceptive amount of damage, but East Coast are not going to be using them to antagonize one operator. You're going to be using them to take out gadgets, as you can yeah. see. Huge value to get a deployable shield. Open up some of those soft walls and just kind of go from there. Capitao is an operator who can counter the clash. Same with Nomad. Both of those are relatively meta operators. I don't know maybe about Capitao, though his pick rate has ticked upwards. Obviously, neither of those operators are in play for Beast Coast. So it will be a challenge depending on oh. how late it goes into this round. Right now, Wi-Fi on that clash has spent almost the entirety of live action playing in weight room slash gym. This is so smart. They're blocking the gym window with the clash standing in the middle of the room so Benny can trick the wall. Normally you play castle barricades, they get destroyed and then that you can't trick. They have a, basically a moving castle barricade. Clash is just standing there. It enables it to trick the wall, shuts down hot and cold, and Beast Coast entries. Now they're gonna problem solve on the fly with 50 seconds left. Again, all because of Clash makes this possible. Spirits looking through that window for one. Hot and cold, the first domino to fall. Silent prepared and ready, good enough for a single kill. Luminosity keeping their numbers advantage for now with 30 seconds left. They will continue to come to blows as Gavin, inside of Logi, is making things work. Now it's all up to the remaining defenders for Luminosity, of which there is a clash for one. Beast Coast will trickle in, and all of their 1v1 engagements will break in favor of their opponents. Spirits in a 1v3 with the timer, not his friend. A beautiful shot on the hat. The clash. He'll see the clash. It will be slowed. Damage will go in. What are you gonna do? do? Feed that kill to Eddie, but Spirits is making this work. Excuse me. He's only a single shot away, but the timer runs out. A spirited effort. But Luminosity wins it on time. That was much scarier than it needed to be. It was. That was definitely close. It didn't have to come down to a 1v1. Could have played more far, you know, further back, more safe. Let Clash do the work. But the thing is, when you're Clash 1v1, it's kind of like the Monty. You rarely should lose those, especially if time is so low, which it was heavily favoring the Operator. And I was like, you know what? Clash could single-handedly win the defense the round. It kind of did. Enabled the bandit trick, denied the wall, both exothermic charges basically, or both attempts rather, and wins the 1v1. That right there is why Clash is kind of a sleeper operator and kind of underrated. Can't wait to see that in a ranked game where you just post the Clash up on the gym window. Much more effective than Castle Barricades. Though, I, I mean... If somebody really does want to deny that wall, you need to use two full castle barricades for it. And then yeah. obviously it's it's contingent on your opponents not bringing an abundance of explosives. I suppose you could complicate matters by throwing in an ADS or even some Wamai magnets into gym that would keep that second castle barricade safe. That's the one that actually connects the gym to the jacuzzi wall, that one doorway. Yeah, but that's uh, that's a heavy investment. That's two of your four castle barricades that are most likely going to get destroyed. I suppose it does eat through the explosive utility brought by the attackers, but it doesn't give you a full operator. Like, at least with Clash, you can be mobile. It's not yeah. just about setting down those castle barricades and forgetting. You can then reposition, as we saw, and it's, it's impossible to argue that that previous round was impacted in a small manner by Clash. Clash was inarguably one of the main reasons why Luminosity was able to win, and even then, Beast Coast kept it close. They're going to call a timeout, and... Hopefully talk through some stuff. First half was 3-3, by the way. Yeah. So Luminosity taking the upper hand on defense. Bodes well for them for the time being. Kind of surprised about the bombs of rotation here from LG. They win CC, then basement, then gym, back to CC. I mean, I, I guess bar is just not that popular. And I get that it's hard in the current meta of things. But I feel like if you want to make things really hard for a team, that is newly established, trying to gel together, which Beast Coast is. Bar is a really hard bumpster to attack when you don't have the experience on it as a squad. 
LG keep things safe though. They'll go CCTV instead. But again, complications arrive because holding garage control very difficult for, for most teams because of Grim, because of Capitals. They deal with the rafter, uh, the raft position so effectively. And again, the oh. bandit trick. Hello? It just happens time and time again. I mean, all they did was EMP the wall, try to like breach it open, and that's it. This is really lazy, kind of sloppy play, trying to play a simplified round against a professional team. And here we see Eddie finding another... Okay, actually, he didn't get that one. I thought he was going to get it. But he found like half the Harpy's utility. There is no cell mess left, and now with that garage wall being opened up, there is no exothermic charges left. Now the defenders know it's going to be a garage stick. They cannot breach construction because they've been tricked. So now LG, they have a big up in this round. They know exactly what the take should be from the attack. Were you, were you going to keep going there? I was, but then I, I kind of lost it. That's okay. It's been a very scrappy matchup between these two teams. I mean, it stands to reason when you've got newer rosters in play. Nice shot by Silent to kick off the first bit of action in round 10. The bees will go up and now Hot and Cold will charge the stairs. And an easy pick for him. Aided by the utility of his teammates. Hot and Cold with just a minute to go is steps away from getting into the bomb site. And I just want to take a moment to talk about Houghton, who right now is sitting at nine and seven on Beast Coast. It was a, not necessarily a surprise to everybody, but it was a bit of a shock that Hot and Cold was let go from SSG. Yeah. He was, in many ways, one of the lower performing players on the team. To see him come into Beast Coast in a leadership role, inarguably the most experienced player on this squad, doing the thankless job of support work, it's nice to see him back. Luminosity, though, at the moment, they don't need any experience because they've got the gun skill to back up their statements. They sweep through the Beast Coast, execute, and suddenly it's match point for LG. <laughs> Out of nowhere. I mean, bit of an upset, one could almost say here. Kind of beating expectations. I was thinking, you know, I saw Clubhouse was going to be the map play here. I'm thinking this is going to test your teamwork, your coordination, your fundamentals, your... Like the small adaptations on a round-to-round -round basis, like what operators you're going to be playing. And I was expecting completely that Beast Coast was going to be the team kind of leading the charge in all those areas. But it's not. It's LG playing the Creative Clash. It's LG with a different problem set rotation. It's LG bandit tricking Beast Coast in two rounds now. So this is what I expected, but it's flipped. LG are making Beast Coast really fight on the problem solving, really work on their, okay, this wall didn't get opened up, what can we do in this situation? And they're winning rounds because of it. Beast Coast only trick up their sleeve on the attack in half so far. Okay, they did a great Deimos earlier, but that was a single around. Besides that, Spirit's been trying to force them on team, and it has not really had the success that we expected. Yeah, they got the opening kill last time they tried, but that was really it. So, if anything, we gotta see Spirits individually step up, play in the right positions here on the Monty, get full value, but also Beast Coast as a team, recognize that you have a Monty on your team, let him go in first. Don't send in Gunner with Buck, who's gonna eat a bullet to his face in a single gunfight, when you can send in Spirits to find the player positions, kinda bully the defenders a bit, and make them feel pressured, then you send in Gunner behind the Monty to assist him to get the kill. Gunner's gonna drop the office hatch. They have those pre-placed drones. They know top four in that part of the map is indeed clear. And Diffuser will open up dirt. So right now, it's a pretty classic round. But at the same time, LG are not roaming. They're not fighting for map control right now. It should be free for the take-in for Beast Coast. And it is. It's a nice angle Gunner's playing right now. Open through that hatch. Look and see if anybody's roaming. Maybe they catch you by surprise. Beast Coast has certainly been surprised by Luminosity through the entirety of this match, going all the way back to when Beast Coast started on defense. You saw on the defender side through those first two rounds how active Beast Coast were. Now on attack, they're running up against a Luminosity team that is quite disciplined thus far on defense. Electric Claw will fail, though, from Wi-Fi as he now heads back over to church and We'll instead use that utility to keep those three panels safe. Halfway point of what could be the final round with Luminosity looking much more poised on defense than East Coast looked on defense and Luminosity looked on attack. 
Let's see though. Problem solving, the pressure is at its highest. You're down a match point. One small slip up and Beast Coast might lose this entire match. And of course, we gather good spirits. Again, I keep saying it, the Mun team. That's the win condition. That's the upper that can make things happen. There's no Capital, there's no Grim, there's none of those power operators. It's just Heartbreach and Munty and five guns on the attack. And LG is smart. They're playing the numbers. They want the 5v5. They want the equal numbers. They believe in the bomb site setup. They got church reinforced. It's kite tricked by Wi-Fi. They cannot get through that on the attack inside. They got mirror windows from blue, etc. It's not gonna be easy for Beast Ghost, but here they go. Spirits is already in. Fuser attempted with 40 seconds left, and it's nobody really easy, seems to be watching. Hat will encroach upon his position, but Gunner's got oh. the long angle. Not before Hat can secure the kill. LG are destroying Beast Coast right now. Diffuser from above doing some serious damage. Kills Hat, but he loses Gavin by his side, meaning it's all up to Diffuser as he drops in the middle of the bomb site. He'll be nearsighted. Hat types, you guys aren't SSG. Stop copying. My goodness, the disrespect. Just to add a little bit of spice to what will be the final round. Luminosity, well practiced on defense. A far more comfortable team on Clubhouse, and they walk away with a win. <laughs> nah, that'd be crazy. I love the fact that LG had to just say it because it's kind of true, right? The identity of Beast Coast and all these those rounds look like, you know, a budget SSG essentially. They didn't have their own identity in those rounds, and I feel like it kind of showed they didn't look all that comfortable. LG for this matchup, definitely the better team. Oh, absolutely. That was Beast Coast's debut in the North American League because they did not ultimately play last week. And I mean, it's a rough debut for them. LG did fall to SSG back in the initial play day. So it hasn't been a perfect run for LG, but today they did outclass Beast Coast. And as was talked about on the pre-show, this is an entirely new roster for Beast Coast of players that have no history with each other. It's very challenging to get up to speed quickly. There's only a couple more opportunities for Beast Coast to get some points before this stage of the NAL might be out of reach. Yep, take it game by ga game, by game, week by week, just try and get better. That's the goal of your Beast Coast. And of course, again, try and find your identity as a five-man new unit. Don't try and be someone else. That's never gonna work out because you need to understand the why and the how. And by copying, you don't typically figure out those aspects. LG, obviously the better team today, but Beast Coast have some promising things that they can look at out of their matchup today. Additionally, the Beast Coast roster is very experienced. You've got some players that have been around for a long, long time and have had tons of success. They're going to help enable that team to reach a higher, I guess, a higher ceiling than if they had a younger team. And there's been some debate over whether or not you want to bring in newer players or whether you want to, quote unquote, recycle some of the old oh. vets who have a trouble staying on teams but that's it for our very first matchup we got a couple more to go we'll be right back
Well, Luminosity finally get their first win of the new NAL with their new squad. With the rookies, everything seems like it comes together, but it doesn't look like the rehash of Clubhouse that we saw last week. It looks considerably better. Beast Coast come in their very first game of the NAL. They will have to go back to the drawing board before they play at their second matchup later on. But LG, they got their three points. They're out squeaky clean. They did their jobs today. Yeah, they definitely did. And unfortunately for Beast Coast, I liked some of the little hints of them that I saw, but to me, it looked like a real lack of preparation, a real lazy little bit of preparation. It looked like they tried to play exactly how SSG played last week. It didn't really seem like they brought Ooh. their own identity to the game. There was a little bit of flair here and there. Obviously, they had the good players, good individual plays, but unfortunately, it didn't seem like Beast Coast I was watching. The thing with Beast Coast, right, is that they brought kind of that energy we expected from them, right, a little bit of everything. They tried to throw a couple of different styles at Luminosity, and we saw some fun stuff. We saw some cool demos play, yeah. which we're excited to talk about, but Luminosity just kind of beat them to the punch. They made some really good adjustments across the board, and impressive changes, surprisingly significant changes, considering their loss to SSG was only a week ago. We yeah. saw a back and forth first half, which was weird because Beast Coast had defense first and didn't take as much advantage of a clubhouse defense as you might expect to do. And then they won their first attack round, and we were all like, oh, hey, this actually looks kind of interesting. And then LG just ran away with it on defense for the rest of the game. Yeah, we saw a lot of mistake correction from the side of Luminosity, obviously from week one to week two. And I think that's where I touched on Beast Coast playing like SSG. They played very slow, very turtled, all of their defenses. And obviously that's where we saw a little back and forth because clubhouse defense obviously is the more favorable side, but we saw some amazing plays from Luminosity. And not to say Beast Coast didn't come to play, they came to play, Luminosity was just better today because the way that they were entering the map was just so fast. They were able to get in the map, get good control, and be able to capitalize on that control and have a full game plan all the way through to the end of the round. And you see it there in the entry kills. I mean, seven and four overall. They were getting in the building first and starting each round off with some success. And of course, there's ways to come back in any given round, but they just started it off strong and didn't let up off the gas. Yeah, they didn't let off, let off off the gas at all, and that was a highlight point that we said Luminosity didn't have that mid to late game ideology. They didn't necessarily know where they were going, and then once SSG had them where they wanted to, obviously it didn't go in LG's favor. But in this game, there wasn't a moment where Luminosity stopped to think, what are we doing? They just got everyone in the position, they knew exactly what they needed to do, and they didn't go for the plants at all. I'm assuming, obviously, we keep that in mind, but they weren't focused on it. They were focusing on slaying out and using the numbers that they were able to gain on the entry for the their late round and obviously that was a much better performance from them it really showed a lot of good changes and it wasn't just on attack on defense too they obviously were adapting and every single round we saw a different look at how luminosity was playing one round it was fast one round it was slow and i don't think beast coast was able to get a grasp on it see here's the thing even though beast coast lose fed still had some cool stuff in his back pocket he had a tiktok idea just ready and waiting with that <laughs> demos clip from round seven that we will take a look at because that's one of the first times i think in na that we've seen this actually super creatively used i loved this play from spirits not only this earlier in the round but it was the execute phase of this round that really did it for us right he was using that death mark tracker not to necessarily get a kill but to freeze the soulless in place and to prevent kicks row from doing the damage from below as the soulless you're hoping to deny the plant but with that death mark everyone would be aware of the Solus's position and not allow that to happen from below. It was a textbook play on how to use Deimos so that you guys can get to use it in your own ranked games. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he was able to shut down the denial and then not only that, but continuously keep that death mark on so that the rest of his team is able to communicate what's going on. Is the plant safe? And I think we've seen a lot of that Solus play being able to stop plant from below. So him being there to also capitalize on his own gadget. I mean, it was a really nice play start to finish and then he was able to push all the way through, down another play on red and he was just being such an annoying pain in the side, just so <laughs> devastating, just being a lurker, just keeping the players on Luminosity aside. Obviously, Luminosity ended up being able to adapt right. and ended up running away with it once they swapped sides. But it was a nice little clip to, to highlight demos. Well, one more good thing for Beast Coast. We got to talk about how the Rook did because his first game, Diffuser had a lot of pressure on his shoulders, playing with a whole bunch of dudes who've been in the circuit for a long time. And he had one very clutch moment that I think made Beast Coast think, yeah, we made a really good decision picking this guy up. And it was one of those 
we're glad we chose this guy moment. Yeah. Right, exactly. It was a moment where he was in a kind of a 1v2 situation, ended up taking it to a 1v1 and got the clutch. Just a really high pressure moment where he was able to thrive. He was playing that support role kind of the whole time, bouncing between those more support and flex roles, but he did a decent job doing that. Of course, not the performance he would have liked to have. He would have liked to get a couple more kills. And Obviously. of course, Beast Coast would have liked to walk away with the win, but a good baseline just to start things off. Now that you've done it, only up from here. It's a nice little bit of promise, especially when you're able to see a rookie feel comfortable, get their own first clutch and their first match of a T1 Pro. Obviously, it does put you in a perspective where you're like, okay, well, was it a performance issue? What was the main issue? In my in my opinion, the where the places that Beast Coast fell off was obviously the lack of their own identity. Sure. They, they have amazing players. Obviously, we saw a lot of those players make big plays, but we didn't see them all come together like we hoped that they would have. But everybody on LG, in their win, adapted so much more from that game against Space Station. What were some things we were noticing in the back? Well, one obvious thing right off the bat was just operator selection and how they were using shields to kind of bolster their new approach. We saw Monty picked twice on the attacking side. We saw one time not so successful, one time quite successful. And we saw them bring the clash on the defense. Yeah. A very unique strategy used to protect the bandit on the jacuzzi wall, allowing him to bandit trick, shut down that entry point. Really just indicative of the changes they've made overall. I think just the shield is one example of it. Well, let's get Haddon here real quick to talk about that W. Dude, can you hear me? How was that win? It's good, it's a good win. Feels good. How long have you been able to scrim with this particular team out of curiosity? We know the roster changes were hectic for most people. So how long has this group been able to really get together and hone things down? I think this exact five, maybe like a week, week and a half at most. That's it? Yeah. Jeez, it's bro. A What's going on, Hat? Uh, I just kind of highlighted a lot of your guys' changes from week one to week two, and I wanted to give you a little bit of room to just walk us through what the correction process was. Well, after the SSG game, we all sat down together and we pointed out all the mistakes that we need to work on throughout the week. And we put our head down, our people did the talking and just grinded ourselves. And, and obviously it showed in this first one. Can you tell me a bit more about the shield play? I mean, we saw that come out on both the attack and the defense with the clash. Was that one of those fundamental changes you guys had cooked up? Yeah, we um, decided we need a new gym like defenses and we uh, thought the clash would have been a good idea for a couple of reasons, and then obviously Monty has been has been like a buff this new season. That's how he picked it. There's a lot of pressure on, I guess, your guys' team shoulders, but talk to me a little bit about you specifically, since you are the longest lasting pro league player on the team right now, which is crazy to say because you haven't been around for that much time in pro league, but you have had some good experience. Is there a little bit of weight on your shoulders that you have to be the leader for the team or how does the power dynamic of the roster work? I feel like on our team, there really is no confirmed leader. We all trust each other hundred percent and whatever who calls something, we always go with it. And obviously I've been the longest, but I'm not the leader with no weight on my shoulder. We know what we need to do to win. All right, brother, good stuff. Is there anything else you want to say before we let you go? I just wanted to say, um, Beast Coach should have got Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, they picked up the wrong rookie, it looks like, at least for this game. Dude, again, congratulations. And for them, that is the single best thing they could have done for themselves. They knew there's a couple different rookies on the table. Who are we going to go with? There's plenty of guys on the board. Beast Coast take Diffuser. Wi-Fi still left up. They go with the other element champion, and they win today. There's a lot of good talent out there. You can't go wrong, necessarily. There's a handful of good guys that you see come out of these, you know, leagues like Element or in some cases across other regions that are great to pick up and will make great additions to any team. One thing I've always noticed about Wi-Fi, especially listening to, to Element uh, listen-ins, was actually how calm and calculated he was, especially being a leader and trying to gather everyone to be on the same page. You don't see that out of a lot of younger players. And so that was something that I just was really impressed when I would listen to him. Yeah, well, Luminosity pick up the dub here on day three, and now they're done for the day. Meanwhile, Beast Coast is not out of the woods. They have to play a second game later on in our game five. They play OXG, and OXG actually has a game coming up next. We'll get right to it after a quick break. Don't go anywhere.